she should have kept her husband's affair a secret. So she is to blame. If you like true revenge stories with fleeky visuals, you found the best place for your vengeful needs. In this episode, a cheating father refuses to take responsibility for his actions, and points his aggressive finger to his loyal wife, for not keeping his dirty affair secret. When his children don't agree, he calls them ungrateful brats. So they simply acted as such. If you are in dire need of ultimate justice, this is for you. Before we start, whenever a shady website asks your personal email address, put in the like button's address, as it will surely be appreciated. Let's dive in. Naturally, viewer discretion is advised. This revenge story might be disturbing to cheating fathers. This whole thing happened a year prior, but the repercussions are still happening, and I hope they continue until the day the bastard passes. This is a wild one, so buckle in. Growing up, me and my sister had no love toward our father whatsoever. I'm not gonna bore you with details but his traits were alcoholic, abusive, violent, and those are just first that come to mind. When my sister got accepted into a much better but also further high school than our local, she moved immediately and rarely visited. We were 10 years apart so I was 4 at that time. I grew up resenting her for leaving me to deal with his crap all by myself, but now I understand better, and we're on good terms. Our local factory was so big that it supported my whole town. Virtually everyone worked there, so everyone knew each other. My parents worked there too. But when it was purchased by the defense ministry, they decided to cut off anyone without at least a high school degree. My mother was let go, and this was after she'd had me four months. My father, however, made it until retirement and was granted military status. Basically, they gave him an honorable rank, so his pension would almost double. But you'd also have to act accordingly because, in terms of speaking, you're military personnel. My childhood was an absolute nightmare, so needless to say, I turned out to be an absolute mess. Anger management and mental instability are notably the worst and I'm still working on them. When I turned 18, I enlisted. Two major benefits, it didn't cost money and I could never come home if I didn't want to. For me, it was literally a highway, out of hell. Fast forward three years later, I got an honorable discharge, turned out I had actual mental problems, who would have known? I got a bulk load of money and even more in the following months, when they were able to process my military insurance. I came home to find my town incredibly underwhelming and my father hadn't changed a bit. Not wanting to spend the rest of my life in this hell hole, I took what I could and moved to the city where my sister was living. The last words dear old dad said to me was, you'd never make it, because apparently, being discharged for a mental illness showed that I was a coward. Also, I could tell he didn't like that I became tougher than the boy I once was, who used to obey his every word. I became pretty beefy thanks to the military and that I'd stood up for myself more in the few weeks I've stayed with him, than the entire first 18 years of my life. I moved to a new environment, took up a blue-collar job and decided to pursue a career in IT, all the while taking care of my mental health. Someone during this time, he got diagnosed with cancer. I was told it was not dangerous, but operations were required. My sister had actually reconciled with him a few years prior, partly because of my mother, and would occasionally bring my niece home to visit them. She was quite successful, so she decided to pay for the whole thing. Operations, treatment, hospitals, recoveries, it was all hers. She paid for this while moving into a new house and buying her first car. I add this because, those things are pretty expensive in my country, which is Vietnam. My father had a huge bank account because of his pension, but he didn't have to pay a single penny. After a year or so he's on recovery, and all in all, things were looking good. During this time, I was struggling with working and studying, living paycheck to paycheck, and had to rely on a social program to get treatment for my illness. I visited him after every operation, though it wasn't anything tearful. If he didn't poke me, I was fine. After nearly a year of staying at my sister's house, he and my mother headed home after his doctor gave him the go. At that time, I was looking for a new job, because the current job was horrible and it made my mental health actually worse. I was lucky to find one where most of my skills were transferred and I had enough time to finish my studying. One day my mother called in tears and asked me to come home that weekend. She shared with me that my father, had been seeing someone else. Now I must admit, my first reaction was not to point finger to my dad. My mom can be very paranoid. She still is up to this day, about lots of things. So me not taking it seriously, 
Combined with the resenting thought of going home on a four hours trip just for something that seemed utterly unimportant, I calmed her down and swept it under the rug. Fast forward a few months, I got another call, this time from my sister. She came to visit that week with my niece to inform them that she was three months pregnant. What was supposed to be a happy reunion, turned into an absolute shit show. Apparently, when my father left his phone unattended for a few minutes, his mistress sent him a very sexy picture, and my mom saw it pop up. Needless to say, all hell broke loose. My sister said that was the first time in many years, that she saw my mother screaming bloody murder at my father. The situation escalated and he tried to hit her, so my sister threw herself in between, which prompted her husband to throw himself in between, because you know, she's three months pregnant. It all ended in a very teary trip back to our city after hours of hurling insults at each other. The only good thing that came out of it, was that my mother somehow was able to bring his phone with her. We tried convincing my mother to get a divorce, but she's the submissive housewife who thought divorces were worse than boiling living puppies, and I think back then, she's still somewhat hoping that he'd turn around. They've been together for almost 35 years at that point, so I figured something must have been there. She didn't want it, so we dropped it and decided to cut him out for good. Lo and behold, half a year after the incident, my father's side of the family started to contact me. I have a strict no-call policy, where the only people allowed to call me outside of work hours are my mother, my sister, her husband, three of my best friends, and only recently, my boyfriend. So to my bamboozlement, my father, his sister, my aunt, his mother all called within a day. They suddenly acted so nice and actually convinced me to come to visit them. Obviously, that was all a ruse. After the incident, my father side blamed my mother and said, she should have kept it a secret and not made a mess, for the family's sake. On top of this, they added the ultimate argument by saying that, he's your father after all. We didn't accept this, so they disavowed my sister and I and added that we were ungrateful brats. Out of morbid curiosity, I ventured back alone to see what it was about. Turned out, they wanted to sell his house. But it was on my grandmother's land. Back when he was about to undergo his first operation, we didn't know how it'd turn out so he transferred the house to my name because apparently, inheriting a dead person's estate in my country, is a living nightmare. Out of convenience, we convinced my grandmother to give me the land, also because she was 80 at the time. This was back when we were on good terms. I knew for sure, they would rather gouge their eyes out than follow up with any of that, if it had happened a year later. I smelt something in the air, I couldn't place it but I knew it was there. So I told them, nicely, that I would think about it and immediately went back, faking an emergency. A plan formed when I was driving back, and that's the first time I'd been so pleased about anything. I actually cracked a smile. I went to my sister's immediately to meet up with her and my mom, since she had been staying with my sister, and after sharing what happened and what I found out, we laid out a plan. After a year living in the city, my mom was much more open-minded and it only took a little bit of convincing for her, to agree to the plan. My sister contacted a lawyer and asked what our options were. Because both the house and the land were in my name, they had no claim to them, and any paper that didn't have my signature on it would be considered useless under the law. They could try and claim it was rented out, but then they'd have to move far away and hope that I'd never be able to locate them, and I knew it'd be too much trouble for a couple of old folks. They could claim it's his life achievement, but because he and my mother never divorced, it's technically half hers as well. This is when I came up with an idea. I asked the lawyer, what if my mother filed for a divorce? He said, it's highly unlikely the court would reward my mother's full claim, unless we could prove, that he was unfaithful before the separation. To his surprise, I could. Remember the phone that my mother brought back from that day? It was smashed during the fight, but generally still in one piece. She asked me to throw it away a few days after, but my lazy ass just brought it back to my place and threw it in the loft. Sufficient to say, it provided us with more than enough proof of his indecency. Small side note, I'm Vietnamese and infidelity is definitely a crime here. In fact, Sharing this story taught me it isn't a crime in other places in the world. After weighing our options, I called to inform my father that I would come home the next month to make an announcement. He was eager to hear it. Upon my arrival, they were so nice and sweet and whatnot, but after I introduced my lawyer, it's like they flipped a switch and suddenly became violent violent. I presented him with two options, relinquish any claim to the house, or be served with a lawsuit. In my country, marital violations are six months probation minimum up to two years in prison. After a lot of screaming, name callings and feet stomping tantrums, he kicked us out, so naturally, 
I assumed he chose the latter. At the first hearing my mom, me, and my lawyer were present. It turned out to be another screaming contest in which he made up all kinds of lies about my mother. At some point, my lawyer leaned in to tell me that if the officer didn't stop his rantings, it's likely that they were buddies and asked me to let him handle things. The officer told us this case wasn't a priority, it would take months to process, we wouldn't like the paperwork so it's best to settle this out of court. My lawyer politely declined and told my father to expect another hearing soon, under much less friendly circumstances. He tried one more tactic in between, which was calling all the relatives and telling them how my mother was a biatch, and I was an ungrateful brat, in hope of creating some kind of pressure on us. Very few of them took his side and even if all of them did, I would have never let him go that easy. In the second hearing, he finally cracked and agreed to my terms, which were relinquishing any claim he might have on the house and divorcing my mom. Basically, the only person who has any claim to the house now is my mother. I agreed to let him keep living in it for the rest of his life though, but not anyone else, aka his mistress, whom he was basically living with. I make it sound easy but that's for the sake of the story. These small court claims can be highly unethical in my country and the law can be slippery. The whole thing took almost a year before our claim was rewarded. My sister gave birth to my nephew around this time. So back to the story, onto the revenge. This was where my work started. First, my sister gathered all the receipts from all the medical billings she has paid for his treatment. A few of them were missing, but we were able to create a huge folder. I also shit my pants learning how expensive cancer treatment could be, not a fan. When we had a general sum of the money, we billed him for it. This is very unethical in my country, since children are expected to take care of their parents, but we threw that out the window long ago. We also knew it was not a criminal case, so we just went to small court claims and then sent in bailiffs to collect, which was just this lady. She went on with an, I don't give a fuck attitude and when he failed to comply, she sent in the police to start seizing assets. Say goodbye to wooden furniture, a 27-inch smart TV, a fridge, and a reclining massage chair, which were all bought by my sister I might add. He had to pay out of his pocket because the fierce lady insisted they continue seizing whatever he bought, until she saw the money. Although the final amount was halved, my mother, under the eyes of the law, shared half of that for some reason, it still cost him 70% of his savings. Of course, this wasn't about the money, we were just petty. We told the moving company they could do whatever they wanted with the furniture. Looking back, I should have taken the recliner because my back hurts like a bitch, even though I'm only in my late 20s. After that was done, I contacted my local factory and filed a report. Remember the sweet pension he got with the condition that he behaved accordingly? Clearly, someone had been a bad boy. Even though it was a small town and most would partially know about his wrongdoings, they just let him be. Besides, nobody ever filed an official report before, but that's not the case anymore. I gave them a very detailed folder with pictures from his phone. To say they were sexy time related, was an understatement. They immediately set up a hearing and he was stripped of his rank, having the original amount of his pension. I know this because old folks gossip like their lives depend on it, and my mother is not excluded. She was very happy hearing about that, it's all she talked about in a month. I was about to call it quits and leave him be, but a week later, my sister called to tell me that my aunt came to her door to berate her and her children. My sister was working from home, my mom also lived there but had gone out for some reason. My sister just called security to kick her out and warned me she could go for me next. I was seeing blood, not because of some lame ass Karen that could cause me inconveniences at most, but because she was screaming at my niece and nephew. As a gay man, I know full well the bloodline ends with me, so I put all of my love into those little guys, to the point that if I had been there, I would have bitten her head off. So I dug a little, and found out my aunt was knees deep in debt. She was hoping she could leech some money off my father, if not from the money he made selling the house, and even if that wasn't possible, at least from his big bank account fed by his pension. Since neither of those was available anymore, she was very angry and thought she could lay it on my sister. You want to know what a man could do with determination and raging hatred? I never set up an online social presence, mainly because up to my 18th birthday, I was too poor to have a phone and then the military taught me it wasn't needed. But for this special occasion, I made an exception. I created a Facebook account and befriended her. I didn't even have to pretend to be anyone since old people apparently accept friend requests from anyone. She had this vibe where she'd show off her money, her vacations and her items, as if she was a wealthy person. From my mother and her trusty gossip circle, I knew that she always told whoever she owed money, that she was struggling. 
so I figured she must be blocking them. The next part was easy. I just had to send all of her selfies to everyone she's owing to. I didn't have to declare myself since I was literally on a throwaway account, so it's just this really long line of messages that showed my aunt spending her money lavishly. For the next following month, she was threatened, not with legal actions like I did, but with much more sinister actions. She would have thugs throw gifts at her door, like paint, fish sauce, and sometimes literal doo-doo. My mother also told me this of course. She finally figured out what I was doing, when I told her to find me a list of all the people she's owing to. This is not where the story ends. As much as I want to take credit for this, the idea wasn't mine. Forgive me, for I once again had to lay out a bit of background. My father's side of the family is this very traditional family, where you would have a person acting as the head of the family deciding things that matter. This was way before the war so obviously, they don't do such things anymore. But the head of the family still has a certain voice, and there's this once in a year ceremony where we gather together to pay tribute to our ancestors. During the ceremony, the head of the family will give a speech followed by some announcements like who passed, who got married, who gave birth, etc. Then there will be a celebratory party where we basically get drunk. My great-grandfather was the head, he had three sons and two of them died during the war. So my grandfather took the mantle, then my father, and eventually, me. This whole side of the family is in another town that's like three hours away from our town, mainly because my grandfather didn't expect to be the head, so he moved out seeking opportunities. I found these gatherings redundant and unnecessary, but that year I was actually looking forward to it. My father tried to keep the actual date hidden, it wasn't fixed but generally, someone between June, but he seriously underestimated my mother. She doesn't have a gossip circle, she has an infinite number of them. So my mother, me, and my sister's family all head back for it. The trip was 14 hours in total, but the result was worth it. We timed it so we would come two days earlier than my father, again, thanks to her gossip circle. This side of the family had never heard the full story before, only the version my father gave them, which was that he and my mother left in good faith. I actually gave my father some credits for not badmouthing my mom. After weighing all the pros and cons, we decided to let my mother loose, and she's exceptional when it came to relaying details about her personal tragedies. I kid you not, if I had posted her story word for word, by this time next week, there would be a global justice for my mother movement. It took just one day for everyone to know what an asshole my father had been. The look on his face when he arrived, with my aunt and my grandmother, seeing my family already there was priceless. He got the stink eye from everyone for the rest of the day, nobody would initiate conversations with him, so he's just sitting there like a sad dog. Now I know what they said about dead horses, but this plan was too brilliant not to follow through. My uncle, let's call him Oliver, came up with this. In the hierarchy, he's equal to my father, and in the event that my branch doesn't have a male successor, 100% what's going to happen, his branch will be the head of the family. He told me I should take up the mantle of the head. It was very sudden, I didn't have a speech ready, my father was supposed to do that, but Oliver told me I could just tell whatever I want, because nobody really paid attention to that thing anyway. All the other elders were okay with it. The speech wasn't even the best thing. At the celebratory party, people will be assigned tables based on the family tree. Heads of each branch will sit together, their children sit together, the elders sit together, so on and so forth. Because I was elevated to the head of my branch, I would be sitting at the big boy table. My father didn't even get to sit at this table because miraculously, it was full, even though I could have sworn there weren't 20 of us and each table has place for up to 10. He had to sit at the regular table, with my aunt, and a bunch of nasty widows who didn't hold back on their snarky comments, so I was told. I don't think he'll ever come back to one of those anytime soon. My father is now just a miserable old man. His mistress left him because surprisingly, she was after his money. He's living in our old house with next to nothing. His retirement money, though halved, was good enough for him to live by. Last I heard, his cancer has come back, and obviously this time my sister won't be paying for it anymore. He had tried to initiate contact with my mother, trying to make amends. We had to block his number and his profile on my mother's account, because she actually considered it. She has her soft sides. My aunt has to sell her house to pay for all the debt, or else they just continue harassing her. She now lives in a small house she bought with the rest of her money. I felt bad for her husband, because he's actually chill and quite nice, but he's not the most decisive and therefore doesn't really confront her. I hope he's doing better. I have no empathy for her only son though. 
Let's just say the apple doesn't even fall from the tree. How do I know all of this? My mother's gossip circle. I left my grandmother out of this because she's very old. She's not demented in any way, she's perfectly sane, but she loved her son too much to admit he's in the wrong. Also, she was very nice and sweet to me growing up, a lot of my good memories are with her. I'm sad because she doesn't see my mother the same. I also stopped talking to her, and would only visit once during Lunar New Year. She's lived in the small house she and my grandfather built, on the land that's now in my name. When she and my father pass away, I will carry out her wish to build an altar for her and my grandfather. Whether or not my father will be included, is still up to debate. You stay till the end, which means you're the one I make these episodes for. I want to take this moment, to thank you, I really appreciate you, because you bring me a great amount of joy. Subscribe for future uploads and show your vengeful devotion, by tickling the like button, without mercy. Do you have any experiences surrounding the topic of this episode? Share yours below, I'll join the conversation. And I'll be seeing you, in the next one.